All right. We're back. Let's get this going then, huh? Uh, talk. Steal these supplies from Echo. Onef leads you to an inconspicuous building. This is them, he says to the handful of guards inside who lower their weapons. In a concealed basement, you find an enormous store of food and sundries. Grab what you can. Make multiple trips to take everything. I know this is going to get us caught. I'm okay. I want to fight Echo. He's an asshole. Yep. The more time... It took more time than you expected. Each moment you imagine Echo's men rounding the corner, yells in the distance, mark that fear becoming a reality. Mm-hmm. Time to battle. But 140 supplies, dude. I had to. So what? So I gotta battle these dudes. Whatever. God, that's actually a ton of guys. This is super inconvenient. I'm gonna get over here instead. Let's just... Let's just fight. Bring them over here. Oh, jeez. Armor breaking, huh? Well, looks like we're gonna have to murder you. I can only do three armor damage or four health damage. Guess it'll be four health damage. Jeez. Taking my guy down and so quickly. Don't have much chance to hit him, but I can kill this archer. Man, e Echo has a lot of men. Why does he have so many guys? I'm not gonna exert myself if I can't actually do anything on that turn. These bros are totally going down. I had a, I had just knew that was gonna happen. We're just gonna have to start pummeling the armor on these heavy duty guys. Two more archers. Ugh, this is a bad, bad combat, man. I'm not, uh, I'm not very confident that we're gonna win this one. They have so many dudes. I could get up to him and fight him, which I think is probably a great plan. Take down his armor for six, and then I'll be able to do some serious damage next time I can fight. Okay, wow, my strength is at one only. It's fine, I'll just hit him a bunch of times. And I'm probably going down here, yep. Not super surprised. Should probably try taking out... Whoops, not that. What is that? How much does this do? Two break to each unit in the way, and normal strength damage to the target. So, break for two, and then do nine. We'll hit him. That's well, pretty good. Yeah. That was a really good hit. Really takes down her ability to do damage. I don't know what special move they have that does... Those shield lines, those shield markers above their heads, but... Okay, they only have two guys left that are actual serious threats. I wonder if I should just take this guy out. Why is this a red note? Huh. Jeez, dude. What kind of move was that? Forgot that this guy actually still had strength. Okay, she's going down. And then, uh, I know you don't want to fight guys, Alette, but if you don't, we will probably all die. So, I'm gonna have to battle harden you a bit. I wonder if I should just get up in this guy's face. a lot better. Just kill this guy. We're almost into pillage mode. Just have to get up and take this girl out. We can do five right now. It's okay. She gets to go. Wow. She still hit pretty hard for someone who's basically dead.
Yeah, don't care too much that you're attacking my armor that hard. Probably gonna kill you here in like the next few minutes. Seconds, I mean. Bring it down to only two. Now let's turn. Let is the killer of the group. She's getting hella kills now, man. That's really good. Alright, that wasn't the worst fight ever, but I've definitely had better. Before long, the last of the stores is cleaned out. As you're turning to leave, a valuable-looking necklace with a deep green stone catches your eye, and you decide to keep it for yourself. Yeah, cool. 35 more fighters, good, because this crew is tiny. Onef leads you and his trusted fighters out of the city before more men show up. Bodies and dredge fill the fields in front of Frostveller. God. You consider the best way to leave. Got this Shepersky stone. What's that? I need a level 5 guy. Hmm. Two strength deflected. Just reduces damage done to me by two or something. I'd be okay with that. Uh, I'm gonna need to level up more dudes. Hey, I got a ton of renown. It's piling up. Ivor's good. Get this guy leveled up. Everyone who can level up should level up. He only got one. I think she's got two level ups just now. Yep. And Rook doesn't have enough kills. Not bad. Not bad. You got two points. What are we going to do with you? Uh, your armor and your strength are both kind of weak, man. I think I'm going to want to just spread it out evenly between these guys. Yeah, two more levels and I'll max these out, so I think that's what's going to have to happen to you. Okay. How about you? You got two points. God, dude, you die super easy. You need more armor than not. And, uh... Huh. They have different caps on stuff. They have switched armor and strength caps. So you already have 10 armor. So I guess you should get 10 strength, and then they'll be both the same, 10 and 10. Whoops. There it is. Confirm. Go. You didn't get anything. Alette got four upgrades. I think we have to do break armor, and we have to do... I know her armor is kind of weak, man, but I really want to get her strength capped here. And I'll pump the other two in our next level. I'll pump her other two in here. And then Rook has some points. Probably he should get some armor, too. That'll be better, I think. Okay, I'm fine with that. We're in a good place. So, all we've got to do next is... Ooh, wait, there's a market. I have 11 renown, so I can't buy these. Protects from death, unless strength is 1. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Prevents you from actually dying. Gives you, like, one last chance. 26 days worth of supplies. How many renown should we spend on supplies? Wow, it costs a whole lot of supplies to get barely any day's worth. Plus two armor on rest. Wow. We can just keep restoring armor. Well, probably not that often. You maybe get to use that once per battle. Pretty good, though. Uh, that's all for me, man. I'm not going to do that. We're going to move on. Outside the walls, things are a mess. Dredge are everywhere. Fortunately, they're going around the hill on which Frostveller sits, leading south, and show little interest in following you as you cross into the wastes. You're finally free of Frostveller, but you think, but you find yourself facing new problems. You hope that whoever Ivor knows at Wormtoe is willing to help. Wormtoe. That was weird. As soon as I was trying to leave, the guy, had, one of the guys, wanted to talk to me. I guess I can make a camp. 
And he should have the chat bubble? Yeah, he does. Yeah, just take it easy for a while. People are noticing. Oh, they've noticed, have they? We're on the edge of dying daily, and you want me to take it easy? Gods, I should be plowing twice as many fields, you understand? Don't get us thrown out of the caravan, Mogan. It's not just you who suffers. Right, so you get married, have kids? Now I'm supposed to settle down too, yeah? What happened to the two brothers clam up as you approach? That's right, I've got a t kid to take care of. So cool your head, Mogan. Hogan departs, leaving Mogan looking awkward. Rook, what brings you around? Just heard yelling, came to check it out, you know? You come running every time you hear yelling? Must be why you look so tired. Look, it's not secret. I like women, Rook. They like me. They like the scar. It's true, man. Chicks dig scars, right? <laughs> Forget it, listen. All this, all this death, every night, half the caravan cries itself to sleep. Pathetic. Come on, Rook, be honest. This is good living. Half the world just tilling soil till they keel, keel over. What kind of life is that? We're lucky. You could go your whole life with no goals, no purpose, nothing to fight against but boredom and hunger. I'm glad for all this. I get what you're saying, man. Look at it like this. We're fighting to the death almost every day, yeah? You can curl up in a little ball of fear. You can go hide in the woods eating nuts and approaching leaves, appreciating leaves or some nonsense. Or you can enjoy the struggle. Know which one I pick. Anyway, just so you know, I never go for a let. Promise you that. Or Oddleaf. All yours. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mogan. You depart, unsure whether your opinion of Mogan changed for the better or worse. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. I'm glad that you're never gonna bang my daughter. That's cool. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, how are we doing, actually? Do we have injuries and stuff? Um, uh, it's just one. Let's just heal on the road. This day will be over soon enough. We need to figure out how to get better morale. I really hope we don't have tons of crazy crap to fight in the waste, too. But at least we have about a month's worth of supplies. Ah, oh, jeez. Our morale is suffering. Maybe we do want to rest a day or so. A woman's stifled screams failed to overly concern anyone. It was only a matter of time before the expectant mother gave birth. The caravan is simply excited by this first sign of new life since the trip began. Uh, call for a day of rest and celebration. Uh, in light of this crappy morale situation, that's what we're gonna do. When the baby's cries replace the mother's, the entire caravan cheers. You raise your drink to the family, saying, Tomorrow we rest and feast to strength and long life. Again, everyone cheers, glad to forget their worries for a small time. Ooh. Oh, ten supplies, but that was only like three days worth. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. The caravan is buzzing with worry. In the distance, someone has spotted a large number of dark figures following you. The dredge, cries one woman, but something about it tells you they don't quite look like the dredge. Gods be damned, chokes Onef, standing on one of the carts to get a better view. It's worse than dredge. That's Echo. Ah! Why? <sighs> the news spreads throughout the clansmen like wildfire. Echo? Why would he... starts Oddleaf. Unless he's after you, Onef. He's insane, interjects Onef, and unpredictable. It's a good number of fighters with him. Your mind races considering what to do. That was actually happening and I forgot to read it. <laughs> so what should we do? Outpace him, dig in for a fight, lead a charge. He significantly outnumbers me? Is that true? Trying to work things out peacefully is obviously a mistake. We're gonna have to do a charge, keeping him away from the caravan. Digging in, I don't think is a great idea. It allows him to initiate the battle on his terms as he surrounds me. Lead a charge. You gather Onef, your allies and fighters, and head out into the waste weapons drawn where the caravan won't be involved. Rook, my good friend, he says as you approach, throwing his axe on the ground. We've come to parley, not fight. Uh-huh. Why would I believe a word you say? Rook, we're good friends. What happened? 
What the hell? You tried to kill us. Just go back to Frostveller and leave us alone. Ah, Rook. It's your pretty girl. I'm glad nothing happened to her. With the dredge, I mean. My friends, how could I forget everything you've done for me? Broke into my city, took my warriors, took my food and then killed some people so you could take more food. That was a nice touch. And took one of my best men. <laughs> He's got the eye twitch going on. <laughs> how are you, Onef? Did they treat you well? Shove it up your ass, Echo. If you came out here to kill me, let's get it over with. Nothing like that. You must think you know me, or people like me. What do Onef tell you? That I'm crazy? I haven't survived because I'm crazy. I did what I had to be done to make it in Frostveller. The only mistake I made was you. What kind of man are you, Rook? You look like an average man to me. A man worried about his daughter, maybe. Just making his way. But then look behind you. How many people is that? They follow you. Fight for you. Why? What kind of man are you? The kind who does what needs to be done. And we have something in common. But unlike me, they gladly follow you. Who do these th people think you are? You saved them. You're a hero. Maybe that's more important than who you really are. What's your point, Echo? I'm your prisoner, Rook. Bind my hands. Frostveller is done. I can't survive there, thanks to you, my good friends. You may not have cut my throat, but you sentenced us to death. I don't believe that's who you are. Is this some kind of apology? You can't trust me, I know that. Take me and my men as prisoners, if that's what it takes. Echo looks down at the ground and the words slowly come to him. I'm not above begging. Ask Onef his opinion. I'd be a hypocrite if I told you to leave them. I don't know, Rook. You don't know me. How could you trust my word any more than his? I'm behind whatever decision you make. I'm not going to leave him in the waste. And I'm obviously not just going to fight and kill him. Because, I mean... I don't want to risk lives of my men on this dispute. If I take him as prisoners... I don't know. Are we really equipped to take prisoners? Wouldn't it be better... If I'm going to take them in, I think I'm going to let them join me entirely. But then again, he could be trying to set me up for another double cross. Ah, this is a tough decision. Um... If I take them in, I don't think the people in his crew are going to be very psyched about me having killed a bunch of them in the town, and I think this is going to cause problems for me down the road, just like that drunk dude that I didn't deal with. I'm not going to abandon them in the waste, though. I'm going to take them with as prisoners. Maybe later... Maybe later I can integrate them after we've established some sort of trust. Yeah. I may be reckless, but I pay my debts. These people are right to follow you, Rook. You're a good man. You have each man's hands bound tightly and their bodies checked for weapons, making sure no mistakes are made. Things are certainly starting to feel complicated. Yeah. Yeah, that's no joke. <coughs> now I have... Now I have crappy morale again. It did not decrease my supplies, though. Okay. Hey, we found another godstone, and there's a bunch of people on pilgrimage here. You find a surprising number of people camped out at the godstone. They've been here quite a while, ever since the sun stopped. Apparently they think Radarmir, the sun god, has come back, and they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with the others while you rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade, but their leader approaches and offers to let you join in their tribute. I ask what this tribute involves. It's Gulenfiri, one says, showing you a golden liquid in a silver bowl. He places some in his chest, which almost sounds like it's sizzling, and explains through clenched teeth that it's a gift from the sun god. An oil that burns like the sun and lets them see things clearly. Hey. 
see if anyone in the caravan is interested. Why not? Not for me. Not surprisingly, you find no takers. You wonder how devoted you'd have to be to go in this for yourself. Inspect the godstone before departing. Nobody can really agree on what Radarmir looked like, as fond as he was of his own isolation. He never directly contacted humanity. Most think he was a serpent that lived in the sun, and it's not uncommon to hear speak of seeing the tail of a great creature slipping through the cl thin clouds on a sunny day. Radarmir was always one of the lucky gods, the kind who people thanked for good weather, healthy livestock, and a good harvest. Despite all that, the biggest mystery has always been how this godstone came to be found at the bottom of a dried-out lake. After some rest, you continue on. The sun god worshippers are keen to stay, so you pack your things and return to the road. Okay. Have fun, y'all. <laughs> ah, jeez. Man. Traversing these crazy wastes. I really don't want to fight Dredge out here with this crappy group. I mean, they're alright, but they aren't leveled up and they're not Varl. <laughs> Several people have noticed black vultures circling above the caravan, taking advantage of the light snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have a visible impact on the mood of your clansmen. The next time you look back, Oddleif is firing arrows into the air, which nearly tag the birds once or twice. Get lost! No dead down here, she shout shouts to nobody in particular. I'll join her. I... Wasting arrows? Are we really gonna run out of arrows? Join her in shooting at the vultures. First person to knock one out of the sky gets their wish granted, you announce. Several of the caravan give it a try, including Alette, enjoying the sport and turning around morale. It's no big surprise when one of Adleif's blue-feathered arrows brings down a bird. You know, says Adleif, scanning the caravan. A lot of these women, they could do this. You can tell from the look in their eyes that she's excited about the idea- uh, that in her eyes that she's excited about the idea. I think I'm gonna start training them how to fight. Yes. Encourage Adleif to train the women. I firmly believe in fighter equality. <laughs> We can always use more fighters, you tell Otleif. If a lead is any proof, you know how to train someone with a bow. Otleif gives you a smile. She heads off to some of the women in the caravan, showing them the vulture she shot down. Yeah, man. More the merrier. The more fighters we have, the better equipped we'll be to handle the dredge issues. And, I mean, yeah, you're not going to be dealing with those giant shieldy guys with those p piddly arrows, but... We need to do something about morale. A trail of blood leads to a clearing where you find a large wounded Varl. He is gnawing on his shield, swearing at no one in particular, and occasionally slamming his cudgel on the ground. If not for the heavy bleeding, you'd leave this one alone without a second thought. We can help you if you want it. In a heartbeat, the Varl is on his feet, swinging his massive weapon. You jump clear as the cudgel smashes through the trunk of a tree. Jeez. Your party scatters to avoid the falling timber. Once you recover, the Varl is long gone leaving only another trail of blood which you decide against following this time. I'm just trying to give you a hand, man. Do people just come to the waste when they're crazy, when they're losing their minds? Are we almost across it? It looks like we're leaving, getting into the forest soon. Back into some real land. God. I wonder what the hell happened to Grofheim. I wonder what happened to the king. Ooh, morale is like super bad. Oh, I was about to click the camp button. A flurry of snowfall seems to come out of nowhere and quickly thickens until you're unable to see the men in front of you. You shout out a complete halt, but the screaming winds drown out the sound. A day passes before the blizzard abates and clansmen start to reappear from the snowdrifts. Jeez. It quickly becomes apparent that not everybody is where you last saw them, and a quick search of the area is not enough to recover all the missing clansmen. Make a... I don't want to make a bonfire. Hell no. We're too close to somewhere else. Yeah, see, Wormtoe is right over here. Let's do a search. I don't care if we waste some extra time. We're really close to a village. It takes time to establish proper search teams, but you devise a way to quickly cover as much ground as possible. After a full day of searching, you find many survivors, but your successes are damaged by a number of frozen bodies, and others who have simply vanished. Disheartened, you return to travel. <sighs> Poor morale. 
Wormtor was never the kind of place someone would build a town. Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. No, I suppose not. We're gonna have to rest in this town for a good couple days. The Var will find you before you see them. Not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here, but it back down when Ivor tells them he's come to see someone named Krumer. Krumer? Man, I don't know how to pronounce the nominative R at the end of the names. So I just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Krumer, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings Ingvar to Wormtail with his own, very own village of humans? Bad news. Dredger coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. That is dire news. Come on, we have food. We'll discuss this more in the meat house. As you follow the old Varl into their meager town, you catch him quietly saying, if it were anyone else. I've talked with the warriors here. I'll be honest with you. Half want to go north and find out what happened at Blotzbalker. I think we should go to Grofheim instead. None of them are happy that you're here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I'd stay here and let the dredge come. But you made this a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if they don't eat much. This is a Varl town. Most of us take care of ourselves. You've got women, children. We could pitch in, you know, make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. These Varl are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's Krumer's call. It won't be long before the dredger here, too. No, it won't. If there's one thing we should do, it's tell Jorunder what's going on. Who's Jorunder? He's a Varl king. Well, as close as, as close to one as we have. Ingvar, where did you find these people? Stay here and rest. But once yours are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see off those who want to head north. But I'll join you to Grofheim. More travel? No. We've already come so far. Stop the pouting, girly. Even if Jorunder won't, l won't listen to a tired or old... I uh, can't speak anymore. <laughs> Even if Jorunder won't listen to a tired or old Varl like me, I have a feeling they'll pay attention to your friend Ingvar here. They'll listen to Ivar? <laughs> he hasn't told you? Of course he hasn't. Do what you need to do, but don't be long. Well, what do I need to do? I hella need to rest and get everybody happy. Hey, Krumer is going to join my crew. Awesome. Uh, What's up with the map? Why do we have a special separate thing to look at the map right now? Oh, wow. Across the wastes. All we have to do is zip up this road to get to Grofheim. We potentially ought to run into those guys here. I wonder what that means after this. What we're gonna do. Why the hell did we go out of our way to Ridgehorn if we were just gonna go past Schleed anyway and then go up this way? Very strange. I forget how to... Oh, yeah, the X. I don't know. Just click rest a couple times until morale... Okay. That was expensive. I have good renown. One renown gets four supplies. So I'm spending six renown to get some supplies. Three more days of supplies. kind of think that I have to do that. This is an awesome weapon. Or, I mean, item. Let's just buy these supplies and talk to this guy. Krumer, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I'll try. <laughs> I never had a moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done, then. Who's Ingvar? Huh. 
I'm not surprised he never told you. I'm just surprised he can stand being around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago. I mean, the dredge bashing type. He was called Ingvar back then. And if you want to know why he changed his name, you best ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle in gossip. I bet you have some incredible stories. I might, I might. Or I could be the most boring Varl you ever meet. Depends how much you like killing dredge. <laughs> ask me again someday, I might tell you about the time we filled a dead yox with whale teeth. What? And why? <laughs> yeah, why? Well, I'd be interested to know about that. How did you get all these Varl to follow you? Respect, young one. After the Second Great War, there wasn't much left for me to do, so I started training other Varl to fight. Got tired of that, made a place in Wyrmtoe. They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seems like that might be changing, though, don't it? Any wisdom on fighting Dredge? Depends how much you know. They're all armor. Tap them hard enough, though, and it'll all shatter. Line up a whole row of slag, and they'll explode on each other all the way down. Getting a big brawl, half your time is spent setting them up for it. Hmm. Huh. If you see one is bang his axe like a tuning fork, try to kill him quick. Sometimes the slag he's calling won't even show up. Why do you... What do you ask? I best leave you to your business. I suppose you should. Take care, friend of Ingvar. Okay. Nothing else to do but move on, I guess. Although, it's been a little bit, so I think we'll wrap the episode up here. It's a good breaking point, so thanks everyone for watching. See you in the next one.